Hello, my name is Becky Dawson. I'm from Floor Training and Coaching, and I'm making a series of videos for Long Sands Academy around a range of different mental health issues, um, focusing on young people's mental health and well-being. I was a teacher for 16 years, assistant head and SENCO, and I have more recently worked for London Borough of Newham, working with schools on their whole school approach to mental health and well-being, and looking at how we can support young people to make the most of their lives, reach their potential, and overcome some of those barriers that having poor mental health can bring. So I'm hoping today that we can talk through some of the signs that a young person might be building, uh, some of the impact that might have, some of the young people that are often um, targeted for bullying, and some of the ways that young people can support themselves. If by the end of this, you still have some questions or concerns, please do speak to someone at Long Sands. We will be happy to talk to you about anything you want to raise. As this is a webinar, that means that you can pause me at any time. So it might be that you need to reflect and think. It might be that you want to go and have a cup of tea. Either of those things are absolutely fine. Feel free to pause as and when. I may ask you to pause also because that will help me to get you to reflect on some of the things that we're talking about. So I'm going to share my screen and we will start the presentation. So I'm going to start with some statistics to give us a context for our discussions today. One in five children aged 10 to 15 in England and Wales, that's 19% of young people, experienced at least one type of online bullying behaviour in the year ending March 2020. And the re reason I've gone straight in with an online bullying stat is because we know that our young people have an increasing access to social media um, and to being able to communicate with others online. And I, for one, think that is amazing. I think it's brilliant that my son can talk to people through his Xbox and meet up with his mates without meeting up with his mates. I think it's wonderful that my daughter can Zoom her friend and they can have um, parties and do whatever they're doing over Zoom. That's fantastic. But it also means that our young people are much more open to that online bullying, any much more than we ever have been, um, you know, for us, if we for us older people, when we were younger, experiencing bullying was more about the, that physical experience or the verbal face to face. And then we were able to go home and shut the door and ignore it or at least get some respite. But unfortunately for young people today, a lot of bullying ends up going online and that can't be escaped from um, if you've got your phone or your computer in your room and you're accessing things there. So definitely something to be aware of. So just some statistics around the types of bullying that young people are experiencing. So 60% um, of young people said they had experienced physical bullying, 89% said they'd experienced verbal bullying, and 18% said they'd suffered theft or damage to their property. And what's really important here is to think about that impact of that verbal bullying. Whilst physical bullying is absolutely awful, um, it is also perhaps more easily identified, more easily evidenced. But that verbal bullying can be really insidious. It can be really difficult to challenge. It can be the odd comment in the corridor. It can be the whispering behind backs in the classroom. Um, and for some people, you know, they really struggle to pin that down and, and be able to highlight that as an experience of bullying. And so we need to be having conversations with the young people about what bullying actually is. And we will go on to that later on. So we have some data from a report created um, focusing on England here. And we're looking at the types of the, how often bullying happens, sorry. Um, and so we can see here that uh, majority, so 32% of those responding said they would experience bullying at least once a week. 25, 6% less often, 12% once every two to four weeks, 15% don't know, and 15% varied. So we can see that there are some young people who are experiencing bullying on a regular basis. And we know that experiencing bullying regularly leaves you at a much higher risk of experiencing mental health problems further down the line. And so the earlier we can intervene, the earlier we can support the victim and, and the perpetrator, and we'll talk about that a little bit later, the better. 
so that that damage is limited. So how would you define bullying? I am going to ask you to pause me now. I'm going to ask you to take a couple of minutes to think about this. You might be watching this with someone else. Have a chat. Have a think about what do you think the definition of bullying is? OK, I assume you've paused and had a think about that. This is the definition I'm going to offer you today. So bullying is behaviour that hurts someone else. It includes name calling, hitting, pushing, spreading rumours, threatening or undermining someone. It can happen anywhere, at school, at home or online. It's usually repeated over a long period of time and can hurt a child both physically and emotionally. Some really important details there. Um, it can be a range of different things, and this is not an exhaustive list of what constitutes bullying. The key being is behavior that hurts someone else. So it could be leaving someone out of a social group openly and cruelly um, and not allowing them to take part in activities that you're engaging in, um, talking behind their backs, etc. And it can happen anywhere, and it can happen between lots of different people. But one of the key things is it's usually repeated over a long period of time. So very rare that you would call a one-off incident bullying. Um, it tends to be something that happens over a longer period. But again, everyone's experience is different. Everyone has um, a different understanding, but this is a really good starting point for our understanding of what bullying is. So, Thinking about what the signs are that a young person may be being bullied. So thinking about our young people and what we might see in them. So difficulty sleeping or frequent nightmares. We all know that if we're stressed or worried, it can affect our sleep. And that's no different from a young person who's experiencing bullying. Frequent headaches, stomach aches, feeling sick or faking illness, not wanting to go to school on a Monday, not wanting to go to school any day, really reluctant, um, particularly if that's a change, if they previously enjoyed school and going to school, that can be a sign that something is amiss. Struggling with their schoolwork, you know, if they're focusing so much on what's going on around them in the classroom or worrying about what's going to happen at break and lunchtime, then that will absolutely have an impact on their learning. Unexplained injuries, so bruises or marks that uh, are there, but they don't have a very good explanation for them. Loss of things, so you've just given them a new bag or they've just got brought their books home and, and they're ruined or the front cover's been ripped off or they've lost their phone or jewellery's gone. These are things to be curious about and think about what might be happening. Sudden loss of friends or avoidance of social situations, so where they may have gone out and down the park to see friends they're not doing so or where they might have gone online and, and talked for hours with particular friends that might not be happening in the way they're talking and the way they're behaving that sense that there's no point they're fed up with everything they are rubbish at everything they're just not really enjoying life eating we all know how we're affected by eating um, so they might be skipping meals, they might not be hungry, but equally they might not be eating in school because of their concerns of bullies in a particular pace and they might come home absolutely starving. So looking at those changes in patterns are really key. And then we come to some of the more serious signs, um, getting into fights, maybe some of them running away from home, deliberately hurting themselves, or to talking about suicide. And Although um, it is very, very rare, there are examples of young people that have been bullied, that have talked about suicide and then maybe ultimately taken their own lives. And this is not to, to scare anyone, it's to recognise that it can have a huge effect on someone's mental health. So the earlier we can support them and talk to young people, the better. So who's at risk? Well, anyone can be at risk of bullying, but some of the key groups who are at risk um, are around uh, gender, so being bullied by the opposite gender, sexual orientation, and that means the LGBTQIA plus group, 
are much higher risk of being bullied, much higher risk of having mental health concerns as a result. But also there's a group of young people who may not be LGBTQIA+, but be perceived as being so by their peers and bullied as a result and have homophobic language used against them as a result. Those with special educational needs and additional needs are sadly one of the um, high risk victims of bullying because they are different, because they are struggling, because they have needs that maybe um, others don't understand. They may have tics, they may have um, ways of expression that are different and those with um, race and ethnic background that is different to others can also be the victims of bullying. Essentially, bullying is about power and it is about difference. So where there is someone who feels they have more power over someone else and they identify a difference in that person, that is really the catalyst for bullying. So don't discount the chance of your child being bullied because they're not in any of these groups. Do just consider, you know, where they align themselves, who, who, how they uh, are being treated by friends. Is this normal behaviour for young people or is there an element of bullying in it? So we're going to talk about the steps you can take to support a young person. Um, and if, if they're struggling, they're not feeling in their right place, you have a sense that something is going wrong, they're showing some of those signs that we've looked at on the slide previously. These are some really simple steps you can take to support them. And actually, these work with any mental health concern. She says, here we go. So talking, sounds obvious, doesn't it? But, um, it may be that the young person doesn't feel able to share with you that they're being bullied straight away. So you can talk to them, can ask them questions, can engage them in conversation around bullying and their experiences on a regular basis, which may make them feel more comfortable and confident to speak to you about the experiences they're having at school. If they know that this is a topic that you aren't afraid to talk about, and that you are going to listen to them, which we're going to go on to in a minute, then they're much more likely to talk to you. Listen, and when we say listen, we mean active listening. Now, a lot of us think we listen, but what we do is we hear to reply. So we're listening to what they're saying, thinking, what am I going to say in reply? What is my solution, as often the case with parents or carers, what's my solution to this problem and how am I going to help? What I would ask you to do in this situation is just listen. Don't listen to respond, don't listen to fix. Just listen to what they're saying, what they're experiencing. Leave silence so that they feel able to talk about everything they're going through. Use open questions. And how did that feel? And what else? Those sorts of things to try and delve as deeply as you can into it. And really use your body language to show that you are listening, you are interested and that they have your 100% attention. These sorts of conversations need to be had where the young person feels comfortable. So not while you're walking around a big supermarket necessarily, not while you're, um, you know, their friends are there, perhaps on a drive to and from a club where you're both in the car facing forward and can talk easily that way. So have a think about when the best time is to have those conversations. Time, a couple of things here, again, linking back to what I've said before, think about the best time to have it, but also giving them time to reflect and consider because they might not recognize straight away that they are experiencing bullying. They might not feel confident enough to talk to you about it in that first instance. So just give them time, just keep going back and checking in, letting them know that you're there, that you care, that you understand, and that you can help them if they feel able to share. And finally, if they do talk to you about experiences of bullying, encourage them or you can keep a note of those incidents when they happen, who the perpetrators are and the details, so that when you do go to school to talk to them, you've got 
a clear record of what has been happening so that you can share that and you can hopefully um, sure have that dealt with by the team at Long Sands. So some other things more generally to think about if a young person is experiencing bullying, because I've already said that we know that that will affect their mental health and well-being. And this is a great piece that helps us to think about what can we do in general to make ourselves feel more positive. And we've got great dream and the great are the outward facing ideas and the dream are the inward facing ideas. So doing things for others, connecting with people, taking care of your body, live life mindfully, keep learning new things. Now we're not saying that, you have, that young people have to do all of these things together, but maybe think about one or two of them that they could do that might help them. So keep learning new things. It might be about joining a new club, making some new friends, linking in with other different people from the ones that they may be circulating with that are causing the problem at the moment. Exercising, not only is that a great way of supporting their mental health, but if you do it together, it's a great way of you connecting. And that could just be going for a good brisk walk at the end of the day and talking through school and what's been happening and getting those endorphins flowing because you are exercising, um, but also connecting with you as a parent or a carer or an adult in their lives that can have that time to offload. And in terms of the dream, it's much more about our thought processes and how we deal with what's happening. So looking forward and thinking about what they have to look forward to, thinking about what's good. So considering, okay, this is not a great thing in my life at the moment, but what is good? What am I enjoying? What am I appreciating? Part of the challenge of experiencing bullying is you start to internalize the negative messages you get from that, those bullies, you start to believe what they're saying about you. And so finding a way to acceptance, to being comfortable with you, who you are and not worrying about what other people think is a huge step, but a really powerful way to ensure that what the bullies do is meaningless. Because if you love yourself and if you are your young people can love themselves then it won't matter what anyone else says about them. You know, they'll be hopefully able to let, let it be water off the duck's back. So really, you know, spend time talking about what their strengths are, how brilliant they are, what they have to offer in life and try to counterbalance some of those negative thoughts that um, they are experiencing. So I talk about ordinary magic all the time. Um, and I do this a lot in schools because what I don't want teachers to think is that supporting a young person's mental health and well-being means you have to be a doctor or you have to be a clinician because actually we can all do things that support that and that's ordinary magic. So it could be as simple as having that half an hour walk at the end of the day where it's just you and that young person and your son or daughter and you're just having a walk and a talk and a thinking about what has happened on that day. It could be that you make their favourite tea and sit down and have a chat over dinner. Uh, it could be that you watch their favourite film with them. None of those things are, you know, need a degree or a doctorate, but are things that remind the young person that they are loved, that they are cared for and that you want to spend time with them. Thinking about how you can give them compliments, not based on their looks, because they don't need to hear from their mum or dad or carers that they're beautiful despite what the buddies say that's not what's going to work but let's focus on what they actually have as skills and strengths that you can really focus on um, and give them that sense of confidence so this is psychological first aid it was used in training widely across schools um, after the lockdown so we've talked about looking for those signs, thinking about what we can see. And the key there is change. There is very often a change in behaviour when a young person is experiencing bullying. What differences are you seeing in how they're interacting with others and how they're socialising and how they're behaving at home um, and pinpointing pointing those and then being curious and thinking, what is that about? What does that mean? And giving the young person space so you're then going to listen 
even if it's just for five minutes, just give them that chance and not be focusing on anything else, not any other children, not the dogs, not the cooking, not the paperwork you've got to do for work, any of those things, just sitting and listening. Using good empathy. So we don't want sympathy necessarily in this situation. Empathy is the best thing. So you might think that the things a young person is talking about the experiences they're having so let's say for example someone's throwing bits of paper at them in the lesson you might think the easiest thing is to ignore and not worry about it and it'll stop but actually what rather than giving that advice what you need to do is be empathetic that must be really hard it must be horrible to have to sit there and and experience that when you're trying to learn empathy gives them a sense of strength it helps them feel that they are not the only ones that have experienced this, that they are not daft for feeling upset by it. Um, and it can be a really powerful tool. Be kind, understanding, be kind, and then linking them in to thinking about some groups, activities that they might want to engage in. There are some great online resources, linking in with charities around bullying and thinking about how they can use their experience to support others as they go through their journey but linking in with other things in their community is a really positive step so some things that they can also do some very simple things so not engaging with any bullies online on whatsapp or on any of those groups so block them report them don't speak to them as tempting as it will be um, journaling is a great way to get lots of those things out of our head and onto a piece of paper so just at the end of the day just everything what you're thinking how you're feeling you can ask young people to do that but you can also do mood triggers trackers sorry um, and that can help them think about triggers of when they have good days or bad days um, we talk a lot about our stress bucket in mental health first aid training and and everyone has a stress bucket and it's a bigger and smaller on different days and some days we'll be able to put up with things that we experience from other people and other days we won't and the mood tracker can help us to kind of think about what did i do that made me feel more resilient more able to deal with that pinpoint those things a gratitude list so you can end each day with the three things you're grateful for and it reminds you that there are good things out there because for some young people who are experiencing bullying they can feel like the world is pointless and there's nothing good going on for them and we're going to talk about this in a minute but you can speak to someone at school as well and the email address is there you can email directly if you, your child is experiencing bullying or you're worried about it then please do send an email and this gives you an idea of what happens once you've reported bullying. Um, so if you report through the email or the post box, then your head of year or support officer, student support officer will come and have to speak to you. They'll also speak to the person accused of the bullying. Think about those appropriate sanctions, guidance and support for both parties. And we will talk about that in a moment. Offer a restorative meeting if you want it that will be offered and it won't be compulsory but thinking about how you can speak with that other person help them to understand how you feel and then hopefully take a positive step forward their log is opened and you will have regular contact to see how things are going um, and again if you've got any further questions about that then you can absolutely contact long sounds so i've talked a little bit about perpetrators of bullying and we talked long sounds bullying uh, process does talk about um, supporting the perpetrator as well and that might seem strange to some people but what we do know is that perpetrators of bullying have very often experienced bullying themselves they are the victim and so therefore they are playing out behavior that they have seen um, and looking at the power they can get from making someone else experience that Often they can be living in a chaotic household or a household that doesn't allow for that sense of control and that's where they get the control. And they also may be experiencing neglect. Now I don't highlight any of these for sympathy for the perpetrator. Per the perpetrator does need to be dealt with, there need to be consequences, but there does also need to be some curiosity with the perpetrator as to why they feel this is a, an acceptable behavior, why they feel that this would go unpunished and often that's because their frame of reference is this behavior is normal, or I don't see an issue with it because this is how I'm treated. So why shouldn't I treat other people like that? 
So it is important if we're going to stop the cycle of bullying to support the perpetrators as well. Now, Long Sounds Academy is a telling school, which is really exciting. There are lots and lots of boxes around the academy that you can drop a note into with your details um, at any point of the day. And they are emptied daily by a member of the student services team and they will come and find you and help you support, support you with the problem that you're having. And just say here, if you're experiencing any issues or problems either in school or out of school, please write down the details and drop your note in the box. So do find that box. If you don't know where it is, ask a member of the student support team, staff team, or you can send that email. As I said earlier, lots of possibilities for support there. There is more external support as well. So different helplines, etc., that you can contact. Cuth.com offers counselling. Um, it also offers some really good moderated chat rooms where you can go in and, and young people can find other people that are experiencing things that they are experiencing. And we've got the Shout service, 85258. It's a free service. Anyone can use it at any time of day, 24 seven, just text in um, and speak to someone, a trained um, volunteer at the other end of the phone who can support you in the challenges that you are facing. Okay, so that is the end of the presentation today. Thank you so much for listening. Um, as I said at the beginning, if you have any questions or concerns, please do contact the school. Use the tell us email address that were in the slides. Contact the head of year, the all young person. Don't suffer in silence or allow them to suffer in silence. You know, there is zero tolerance on bullying at Long Sands. So please do reach out and get support as and when you need it. And I'll see you next half term for another mental health and well-being parent session. Thanks. Bye.